really far to the left. So 90% of it is, is, has not been converted into isocitrate. But once you start using up the isocitrate, you can drive the equilibrium forward again. So once you start removing this, then this reaction can go forward and produce some more, and then remove it again and pull it forward, just like Le Chatelier's principle that we talked about in the past. So we already know the answer. How can this reaction still proceed? We need to have a really nice energetic reaction for the next one to pull it along. So as soon as that isocitrate gets formed, let's quick use it and move on. So the enzyme is called isocitrate dehydrogenase. A hey, and there's our really great negative delta G. So even though we paid a little bit of a penalty to make isocitrate. When we go to make alpha ketoglutarate, we have a really nice high negative delta G. So we know this is a dehydrogenase reaction. So we know it's going to be a redox reaction. And so one of the things we need for this reaction is we need our NAD+. So that one So we need that and at the same time we're going to do a decarboxylation reaction. So the combination of decarboxylating it and hydrogen or converting the NAD plus to the NADH, both of those two is what's helping drive that negative delta G. And our entropy is one of the big things that's going up. So you've taken a six carbon component now and split it into a five and a one. So the, the T delta S portion of that delta G reaction is going to be pretty